Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing personalised cancer medicine. Okay, right. Now, the first thing that I just want to say, which I don't think I uh, fully got across in the previous video, is that personalised medicine goes beyond just cancer, okay, as an aspiration. Cancer medicine is a particularly developed form of personalised medicine, but personalised medicine goes beyond it, okay? Personalised medicine is the hope that in the future we will be able to predict whether drugs are going to work on someone and whether they're going to have adverse side effects in someone. Okay, so we know that this is a common phenomenon, that many drugs, uh, they work in some people, they don't work in other people. Okay, it doesn't go for all drugs, you know, certain vaccinations and many of the basic painkillers, they seem to work in everyone. Uh, but some drugs work in some people and then they don't work in other people. Okay, in addition, they have horrendous side effects in some people, whereas some people get away with no side effects. Okay, what we want to be able to do is predict who the drug is going to work in and um, who is going to get horrendous side effects so that we can then say whether to give this person this drug or not, basically. Okay, that's the hope of personalised medicine. Okay, personalised cancer medicine is then just that applied specifically to cancer. Now, it becomes slightly more complicated in the case of cancer because, as I say, there is the difference uh, in the germline genome and the tumour genome. So you have to look at both the germline genome and the tumour genome. Generally, in other aspects of personalised medicine, all you need to look at is the germline genome. Okay, but in cancer gene, uh, medicine, you need to also look at the genome in the uh, cancer cells. Okay, right. So the first things then that I want to uh, now go over to are talking about two related terms to personalised medicine. So there is then the concept of pharmacogenomics. This basically means exactly the same as personalised medicine. Okay, uh, pharmacogenomics involves looking at someone's genome to decide whether the drug is going to be effective and also what adverse effects the drug is going to have. Okay, so using genomic information to understand what the reaction to a drug is going to be, basically. Now, there is another term that I want to define because um, it, you might get confused if you see it. There is also an older term which is pharmacogenetics. Now, this term is dying in favour of pharmacogenomics. Okay, so pharmacogenetics is the older concept. Okay, uh, this is the concept that you can predict um, someone's response to a drug looking at a single gene, basically, rather than by looking at the entire genome. Okay, and actually, many of the examples of pharmacogenomics that we're going to see it does involve a single gene, i.e. they're really pharmacogenetic examples. Okay, but we are now in the genomics era. There are now machines that you can spit into and they will sequence your entire genome with a bit of luck. Okay, uh, so the era of just looking at a single gene to decide what someone's reaction to a drug is, is being phased out in favour of looking at the entire genome. So that's why pharmacogenetics is gradually being phased out and the term pharmacogenomics has taken over. But really, they are very, very related concepts. This just means looking at a single gene to predict someone's reaction to a drug. Okay, this means looking at someone's entire genome to predict uh, how someone is going to react to a drug. Okay, however, as we're going to see, uh, most of the examples of pharmacogenomics that we currently have are pharmacogenetic examples, really. They, uh, they are all about just a single gene, basically. Okay, and you'll see more of that later on. Okay, right, so those are those two terms, pharmacogenomics and pharmacogenetics. To be honest, they're used interchangeably, but pharmacogenomics is the term that's coming into fashion, pharmacogenetics is the term that's going out of fashion. Okay, so let's try and think a little bit more about why looking at someone's genome is going to be helpful for understanding how they're going to respond to a drug. Well, there are two parts to this, okay? Two parts to how drugs work, okay? More big terms. There are the pharmacokinetic considerations, okay? And then there are also the pharmacodynamic 
uh, considerations. Okay, and these are more big words for concepts that are very simple. Okay, pharmacodynamic considerations. So what then are the pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic considerations? Well, firstly, what is pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics? Pharmacokinetics first. This is all about how drugs are actually delivered to the site of action. Okay, so um, if you take a drug orally, let's say, it will then have to be absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract into the blood. It will then have to be distributed by the blood uh, to certain areas of the body where it actually needs to act, potentially where the tumour actually is, if we're talking about the case of a chemotherapy drug. Okay, then you also have to consider how long is the drug going to actually be present in the blood. Okay, and to think about that, you need to think about how uh, the drug is metabolized, potentially in the liver, and broken down and deactivated, uh, and then how it's excreted. So pharmacokinetics, there are uh, four main things to consider here, and um, a good way to remember it is ADME. Okay. So, uh, what this stands for is A is for absorption, okay, so how the drug is absorbed uh, from the gastrointestinal tract into the blood, okay, D is for distribution, i.e. how it's distributed around the body, okay, M concerns metabolism, okay, and then E is finally for excretion. So these are the main uh, four things to consider that are about pharmacokinetics. Okay, so basically, if you have some uh, variation, okay, that means that you metabolize a drug extremely slowly, and we're going to see many examples of this. Let's say um, you have some drug, you take some anti cancer drug and it's metabolized in the liver, it's deactivated in the liver by a certain enzyme. And let's say you have a non-disease causing uh, variation, which means that your ability to metabolize this drug is slower than other people's. Okay, then what will happen is the drug will remain in your blood for a much longer time, and that might then lead to you having horrendous side effects from the drug. Okay, so this is how genomic information can influence pharmacokinetics and how pharmacokinetics can influence how you're going to respond to the drug. Okay, so genomic information, uh, information regarding your genes, can affect how a drug is absorbed. Okay by the uh, cells of the gastrointestinal tract, how it's distributed, certainly how it's metabolized, and how it's excreted. So your genomic information can affect all of these pharmacokinetic parameters um, for a drug. Okay, right. So that's what pharmacokinetics is about. It's all about how uh, the drug is distributed around the body and how long it remains there for. Okay, so what concentration is going to be present at the site of action, basically, is all about what pharmacokinetics is. Okay, pharmacodynamics is all about once the drug has actually got to its site of action, is the drug target there? Okay, because if the drug target isn't there in some people, then of course the drug is not going to work. Okay, so again, this is how genomics it affects how you're going to react to a drug. Okay, because if yeah, because pharmacodynamics is all about whether the drug target is there. If your genome uh, means that the drug target isn't actually there or is there in a much lower amount, then it means that the drug's efficacy is going to be reduced. Okay, right. So pharmacodynamic considerations are more to do with the efficacy of the drug here. Okay, and pharmacokinetic considerations are to do with both the adverse effects and also the efficacy. Okay, because if your pharmacokinetics means that you uh, remove the drug uh, too quickly, then maybe it's not going to actually build up at a high enough concentration at the site of action to actually have any effect in the first place. So pharmacokinetics in the, um, has effects on both the efficacy and the adverse effects, whereas pharmacodynamics is more about are the um, drug targets actually there. But of course, pharmacodynamics can also affect the adverse effects as well, because if uh, the drug has other drug targets apart from the actual desired drug target that you have uh, present at a higher level, then that could cause the side effects. 
Okay, so both of these are important considerations when uh, considering pharmacogenomics. Okay, right. Uh, in addition, we can divide the pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic uh, considerations up further in the case of personalized cancer medicine, okay, because uh, the, your germline genome is going to affect more how uh, the pharmacokinetic parameters work here, okay, and your tumor genome is going to affect more how the pharmacodynamic parameters work here, okay, so your germline genome is going to affect how the drug is going to be absorbed, distributed, metabolized, and excreted within the body, and then your tumor genome is going to affect whether the anti-cancer chemotherapy target is actually present in the uh, cancer cells. Okay, right. So, now what I want to define is the concept of targeted cancer therapy. Okay, so this is another related concept. It's not quite as broad as the concept of personalized cancer medicine. So, targeted cancer therapy. Targeted cancer therapy uh, refers to giving drugs which specifically target uh, drug targets that are only present in the cancer cells, okay? So you look at the cancer cells' genomes, okay? You look at what it is that is driving these cells to be cancerous, i.e. to overproliferate and to have this motility property, and you create drugs that specifically target things that the cancer cells are doing that other cells are not doing. Okay, and this is going to be specific for individual people because, as we've talked about, there is intertumor heterogeneity. So, if you look at cancer cells within one person, the actual uh, mutations that have occurred in those cells to give them the cancerous properties may be very different from in other uh, people's tumors. Okay, so targeted cancer therapy is the idea that you look specifically at uh, someone's cancer cells and you look to see which uh, proteins are uh, driving the cancerous phenotype and you try and target those specific proteins, okay? So this is a big part of personalized cancer medicine. Really, it's all to do with the pharmacodynamic considerations. It's about looking at drug targets that are present in that person's specific cancer cells. Okay, so it's a less broad term than pharmacogenomics. Pharmacogenomics refers to both how the drug is distributed around the body, pharmacokinetic considerations which are influenced by the germline genome, and also once it's actually there, is it going to have effect because the drug target is there, and that's all to do with the tumor genome. Targeted cancer therapy is just about this second portion, the tumor genome and the pharmacodynamic considerations of whether the drug target is there. Okay, right. And as we've stated previously, a big problem for targeted cancer therapy is intratumor heterogeneity. The problem that within tumors, you have cells which are different um, ways along, uh, well, different amounts along the process to becoming cancerous cells. And if you give a drug that's only going to target the final clone of actual cancerous cells, then it's not going to kill all of the previous intermediate clones, and those then are just going to start up the process towards becoming cancerous again, and you'll get uh, a new clone formed once you come off the drug, and therefore you'll relapse. Okay, so that's a big problem for targeted cancer therapy.